How's it going everyone? It's Sam. There are some companies that are completely screwed right now in my opinion. They're losing so much money every single day now and there's worse news on the horizon for them. I want to talk about that. Also talk about the recent little pump in Bitcoin. Bitcoin was above $27,000 up to just a few minutes ago. If you don't mind, hit subscribe, turn on that bell notification so you can see future videos just like this one. And let's get into it. So as you can see, crypto was up over the last seven days. We're up a decent amount, 6.4% for Bitcoin. The rest of the market looking green as well over the last seven days. Obviously, though, in the last hour, we have come down a little bit. Bitcoin was pushing up against about 27,500 earlier today. Now, here's the good news. We, it looks like, have flipped the previous resistance into support. You can see we bounced off of the $25,000 mark twice. We got rejected twice. And now we have bounced off of it and actually held it as support twice as well. Now, this is pretty bullish on a technical level. That being said, we still continue to see dominance. Bitcoin dominance move up with a series of higher lows. And Bitcoin dominance is right around 50% right now. So I would not be surprised if we did see some big moves at some point in the future down or up for Bitcoin, but dominance continue to move up. What we have to be careful of is what just happened, which is we had open interest go up pretty quickly. That was the reason that we actually saw the price go up most likely today. We had a lot of open interest. We had longs coming into the market. They wrecked a bunch of shorts. You can see $60 million worth of shorts wrecked in the last 24 hours. But now we're starting to see longs get wrecked because we see that pretty often. We have a lot of open interest come in. Shorts get wrecked or longs get wrecked and then vice versa. And that pretty much just peters out to where we were beforehand. So I think we have to be very careful when there are moves like this. There's no real fundamental reason. It's not likely that uh, someone has just dumped a ton of money into the market randomly. Uh, when we see open interest move up like this, it's that's the reason for it. Most of the time that we see the price go up or down. And you just don't want to get caught on the wrong side of the trade where you're buying because the price is moving up. And then it just dumps right back down and it was just a flush out of leverage. So just be careful. You know, I think this is a great time where there's not a ton of money flowing into crypto, like new money. As you can see here, we just have money flow in for a couple weeks, then money flow out for a couple weeks. $50 million coming out of digital assets, $54 million coming out this week. And I think at this point, we're just waiting for the next the next big catalyst we're waiting for money to start flowing in and of course cryptos can move around in the meantime a little bit you can see solana got inflows while ethereum got outflows so you know those can cross a little bit their uh, value in accordance to each other can move up and down but until we have most likely the spot bitcoin etf or quantitative easing or some change from the fed in their stance or some other big fundamental shift like the next Bitcoin having, I think we're pretty much just at an accumulation phase, which honestly is the best thing for you if you're someone that doesn't have as much or as large a position as you could have in crypto or as large as you want to have. So that is crypto right now. It's just more of the same. Now we do have a Fed meeting coming in just a few days. So that will shake up the market depending on what he says. Obviously, we could have a nothing burger he could just say hey we're going to keep on watching the data come in that kind of thing that's probably what he's going to say he's been very obvious about what they've going to what they were going to do all year round uh for the last maybe two years now he's been very obvious with what they're doing and over the last year i think they've actually done a pretty good job now we have seen some some CPI and PPI come in higher, which is not what we want to see. So maybe they're talking a little bit hawkish to us, a little bit more than expected. So just be ready for a little bit of volatility. Now, there's something that I need to cover. Someone is is losing so much money. A couple of companies are losing a lot of money right now. We had news uh, that that uh, the UAW was going to go on strike, right? 145,000 workers tr are striking Detroit Big Three right now, and they could lose an estimated $1.85 billion every week. Now it's been four days. So they've lost about a billion dollars, billion dollar mistake, billion dollar problem, whatever you want to call it. Uh, now there is news that they might also go on strike in Canada. So it sounds like right now, 
not all the workers are going on strike. It's not like every single branch is shut down. It's like a couple factories that they're going on strike at at a time. So maybe they're not losing $1.85 billion, but they're losing a lot of money. Now, Unifor is gearing up for strikes as talks with Ford stall out. Now, this does affect crypto in a way because Tesla is investing in crypto, you know, all that kind of stuff. But really, just really interesting in a business sense. And if you're investing in stocks, this is important too. The United Auto Workers Union, uh, United Auto Workers Union began a targeted strike against Ford, GM, and Stellantis after the sides remained far apart in terms of defining their next four year contract though talks remain a work in progress. However, the Detroit Big Three automakers are also in the midst of negotiating a new deal with the Canadian union, Unifor. Talks that the sides have called complex as the future of automotive manufacturing plants in that country remains up in the air amid the ongoing EV transition. Unifor select Ford as its target company to negotiate with in the early process, but just last week, rejected the law, the automakers' first two offers, saying they did not come close to meeting our expectations. So they said that they are ready uh, for all scenarios, including strike action, and their deal is set to expire tonight at 11.59 p.m. They have 5,700 members, and about 98.9% of their voters so that they were in favor of an action of striking if it becomes necessary. So they have 10 hours left to be able to come up with this new deal. Otherwise, they're going to be bleeding from another cut. Now, I think this is really difficult because <laughs> there, there are a lot of reasons that this is difficult. These automotive companies have not moved over to EVs fast enough. They have lower margins than Tesla because of it. They can't cut prices like Tesla. They can't pay their workers even like Tesla. The UAW boss says workers shouldn't accept lower wages, so greedy people like Elon Musk can build more rocket ships. He's going after Elon Musk when they actually pay higher salaries than the other car companies. The average salary for Tesla employees, $104,000 per year. Compare that to Ford, ninety-six. So we're talking about almost 10% more, 8 or 9% more. GM, 89000 per year. So Tesla already pays their workers better. They have better uh, stock-based compensation as well. And I, I don't think that going after Elon is going to help them in any way. So that's just kind of interesting to see some kind of lashing out there. Now, I understand the workers aren't being paid enough. right? That's just a problem because there's been so much inflation. A lot of car companies have either been unable to pay workers more, unwilling to pay workers more, because in a way, if they pay workers more, their profit goes down, which means that stock-based compensation and investors in general are unhappy, causing it to be more expensive to pay their workers, especially if they're giving stock-based compensation because they have to give more shares or it's just not gonna be worth as much. The problem with what's happening right now is the longer UAW is on strike, uh, the I think the more employees want to go to Tesla. Tesla doesn't have these issues. They're continuing on their goal. They have better packages for employees. They're more, uh, I think, motivated. The average employee is more motivated because they have a mission. They're moving towards sustainable energy. And... Like I said, they can get paid more. They can work on cool things. There's just not as much bureaucracy. There's not as much BS. And I think some of those employees that are striking now are probably going to go over to Tesla. Definitely some of them are going to go over to Tesla. question is how many. But at this point, this just makes Tesla stronger. It's not something that you want to see because people are out of work or striking. Car companies are bleeding. Uh, some estimates say that you could lose $5 billion a week. The U.S. economy could lose $5 billion a week through the trickle effect, through all these companies being on strike. Again, it's hard to estimate because we won't really know what this means for all these companies. There are certain factories being shut down. I don't know what they're doing behind the scenes to kind of try to stop the bleeding or to continue to make these factories work. But at this point, it's a tough situation. But Tesla comes out stronger. Tesla just got 140 million euro 
a grant for charging stations over in Europe, which is great. I mean, they continue to dominate. And Tesla's down a little bit here today because of some Wall Street estimates going down for EPS. That's all short term. Of course, you care about what your companies are doing in the short term, right? But long term, nothing's really changed for Tesla. They continue to get stronger and stronger. The question is, when do they get their next S curve? Is it Dojo? Is it self-driving? Uh, and when does that happen? How does energy continue to grow? When does the Fed start lowering rates? At that point, when the Fed starts lowering rates, it's going to be crazy for Tesla. They might have some huge numbers. Let me know your thoughts on this underneath the video, though. I know it's a little bit different part of the video than I typically film talking about companies, but I think it's good to continue to look at the entire market because money flows from one asset class to another. So we have to be on our toes paying attention to what's happening all the way around. Thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.